I also wanted to talk to you about a few more things. Yeah. Um, the, I'm, I'm surprised on your take on Van Gogh uh, to some extent. Um, I do think that one of the points you make, you cannot compare Van Gogh to the Hudson River School. I think they're vastly incomparable. Um, but I, I find it an interesting take. Why do you think he's overrated? And why do you think it's just a, a smattering of great paintings? You don't think overall he's a great painter? I, th- I would put him in the near great category. Uh, when you have sure. 10, 12... Yes, I mean, I, I mean I've, I've seen him in person, but I've also, even before that, when I saw him online, I think that he has one of the most distinct uh, ways of painting that I've seen. Well, it depends. It depends on what you talk. Are you talking about the the swirly stuff, which is the later stuff? I mentioned the later stuff. I mentioned the potato eaters, and I think that's a grossly overrated painting. Uh, yeah. um, but um, it, it, uh, the the problem I, with most of the swirl stuff, and, and uh, watching this movie, this cartoon that really technically was brilliant uh, in how it used it, but there was just no story there. It was a bullshit uh, murder mystery story. Uh, the the problem is he doesn't do anything. It, 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 it's like, oh, here's flowers. Here's a stellar. Oh, here's a field. Here are ravens. Here's a star. Here's the moon and whatnot. And when I when I read, I've read criticism and I've seen videos, you know, uh, on Van Gogh is no one ever says anything new. Uh, it's all imbuing into it what they want. When you look at Manet, uh, and I, and this gets back to someone recently, I don't know if I forwarded it around, had talked about uh, Leonard Schlein's book, Art and Physics. When you look at uh, th- what he did in Art and Physics, which is really the only good book that Schlein ever wrote, uh, you, you, get, you get to see how many different ways Manet changed appearances. And, and he was, in a sense, sort of like me, constantly tweaking this, that. Here's, here's a scene of, of, of these people, but it's from this way, that way, that with Van Gogh, it's all the same thing. Now, you could argue that it's because Van Gogh was mentally unstable or, or whatnot when Manet was not. Um, but I, I just don't. I just don't see. Technically, uh, his greatest uh, his greatest paintings. You know, I put them with some of the greatest paintings. He just doesn't have enough of them, and too many of them are repetitive and redundant, and they don't bring anything new to what he's viewing. Oh, what would be a, a couple of his paintings that you would mention then? And then also, what, who would be in the Dan Schneider painting pantheon then? Oh, I, I'd have to look. Like at just a, just I, five or six, five or six names that immediately come to mind as among the best. Oh, I, I, I don't even know the names. I mean, the one with the red, there's the one with the sower in the field, you know, so that's a really great one. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, the Starry Starry Night, I, I would say is, but it, it's become so... It's one of those things that has become so cliche in a sense. Uh, there are so many uh, Starry Night-like paintings by by lesser artists. Um, uh, those 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 are a couple that come to mind. I don't. There's the one with the the girl walking over the little bridge. Um, uh, well, it's a I don't know if it's a bridge, a footpath over a little body of water. Um, uh, uh, I think there's one that he painted of a woman that was in the town he stayed in, in France. Uh, I, I, again, I don't, I, I, I the titles, I'm, I'm not going to be able to give you the titles. Uh, but for example, I don't think, uh, I think it's Degas. There's a great painting, Madame Wiesel Lala at the Cirque, whatever. Um, and I think I did one of my painting poems. The one she's swinging off the trapeze? Yeah. That one where she's yeah, where she's suspended in mid air, that you the look on the look of the the tautness of the body. There's there's something so in that moment that I don't think is ever captured in a single Van Gogh. That painting, Mademoiselle Lala at the circus, whatever, is better than any Van Gogh painting. And and Degas has a number of paintings like that. Manet has a number of paintings like that. And just to give you an example. Even There's a really great um, painting I think is often underrated is the interior painting where you have you don't know exactly what's going on whether it's a marital conflict or whether something sinister is going is on. I would agree with Degas. Degas is well above Van Gogh. You, you, uh, um, but I, I was saying, I think even Monet, who I think Monet to me is sort of like the 
the other side of Van Gogh is both of them are so distinct. You can't mistake a Van Gogh or the later Van Gogh, the swirl Van Gogh versus uh, Monet. But I think Monet too did something yeah. with color and reflection and uh, he didn't do pointillism, but his, there, there's something deeper and let, let me put it this way. I think Van Gogh, the reason Van Gogh, I wouldn't put with the other ones, I think he operated totally on instinct. And he had a great instinct at his best. Monet, Degas, Manet, uh, uh, even Picasso, who I think is overrated, was a great painter. Picasso, uh, Dali, um, the Hudson River School. These guys thought. At th so they didn't just have instinct, but they thought. I think Van Gogh, had he not been a nut job and had he thought about things, could have been in that class. But I would put, you know, I would put Van Gogh at, at sort of the Kenneth Patchen level. Uh, you know, if we're talking poetry, he'd be at the level of a Kenneth Patchen, a Kenneth Rexroth. Um, he's someone who at his best had the skill, uh, although he he surpassed someone like uh, Mark Van Doren. He, he'd be at, he'd be at that kind of level. As a, as a writer, Van Gogh to me is at an Ambrose Bierce level. He's not at Mark Twain. You know, you've read, have you read Ambrose Bierce? Yeah. He, 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 he covers a lot of the same territory as Twain, but he doesn't have the humor. There's more of an intellect in Twain than in, uh, than in Ambrose Bierce. So I think Ambrose Bierce, you can say he had some great short stories. There's uh, another one is Stephen Crane, his prose, you know, Maggie, a girl of the streets, uh, uh, and the red badge of courage. Um, those have great moments. I, I would so I would put Van Gogh at the Stephen Crane Ambrose Bierce level writing wise. Uh, uh, I would put him at the O. Henry short story writing level wise. What the difference between O. Henry and say Chekhov at his best, if we're talking published writers, is that Chekhov pushed the form beyond. O. Henry was limited, but he he could he could he has he has probably two or three dozen great short stories. Chekhov has maybe 40 or 50, let's say. Um, but Chekhov's stories are deeper. They they put, uh, uh, what's his name? The, the guy, uh, Erwin Shaw, goes beyond both of them uh, in his early short stories. Um, there's just something, I, and I think it gets down to Van Gogh it was just instinct. A, a great raw talent and instinct, but he didn't understand a lot of the things he was doing. In some ways, you could argue... Uh, I, I, I think Ingmar Bergman is a greater filmmaker than Van Gogh was a painter, but maybe maybe Bergman was more Van Gogh-like in that he didn't understand film outside of himself. He knew how to make a great Ingmar Bergman film, but he couldn't recognize necessarily a great film by someone else. It's interesting you mentioned Monet, but I found him one of the most repetitive painters uh, going. Huh? He, 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 he is. He is. Yeah. But I think. But I think... I think if you look at all of the paintings of Monet and stack them up at Van, Van Gogh, there's more diversity, there's more thought in what he's doing and why he's doing it that you can divine than you can from Van Gogh. Yeah. I would also add uh, Winslow Homer and uh, Thomas Aikens well, yeah. to your list of greats. Ho Ho Homer, yeah, and I, I forgot. Homer and Aikens and uh, uh, the guy who did... Uh, Rembrandt, Van Rijn. Rembrandt, Van Rijn. Um, from here. Uh, but uh, the 20th century uh, American painter, Nighthawks, um, uh, what's his Edward name? Hopper. Hopper. Hopper's another one. And these guys thought about, I mean, Hopper and his... Hopper son, did uh, loneliness better than any other painter. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he was a, uh, Winslow Homer. I mean, my God, you look at some Homer's and Aiken's paintings too. Um, some of the Ashcan painters, uh, the Ashcan school of painters, um, there's that there's that famous painting that I did a poem of that now eludes me. Uh, oh, uh, invited into the club with the black and white boxer in the 1890s. There's a painting of, uh, and it's just like the, the fury of motion. And there you get some Van Gogh like techniques, but it serves a higher purpose. Now, some people would argue the Van Gogh uh, fans would say, well. You know, you're trying to impose this limit on Van Gogh and blah blah blah. blah. No, I'm just I'm just saying Van Gogh did not do as much. You can say that this painting is the sine qua non of, let's say, the sower. Uh, I, I don't know what it's called. The, the the guy sowing in the field. 
that this is as great a pastoral painting as, say, the famous one uh, by Millet, um, you know, uh, that the, the the poem was, you know, stooped by, bowed by the weight of centuries. Um, what What's that? The, the poem, you mean, the, yeah. the Old Man and the Hope? Yeah, the Old Man and the Hope. Uh, and, and the painting it's based on, you could say that's a, that's a, the, that, Van Gogh's The Sower, or the, whatever it's called. Yeah, that's it. That's the exact image I got from that painting. Yeah, is, the, is, is that that's a great pastoral painting. But again, I just don't think that Van Gogh brings enough to the table uh, to to put him up with the Manets and the Degas and the even the Homers and, and, and one that we mentioned. Um, uh, uh, and uh, very uh, underrated, criminally underrated, Andrew Wyeth. Andrew Wyeth, yeah. you talked about Hopper. Andrew Wyeth is a bit more realistic than Hopper, but there are, there's one painting, and I forget the name of it, where you just see an old shack, a tree, and hanging from the tree are some corpses that are drying out. You and it's the tenant farmer, isn't it? Some, whatever it is, you know. Uh, yeah. Christina's world gets all the glory, but he, there are other paintings. I've got books of it, you know. Uh, Andrew Wyeth was just, was just outstanding. I think we uh, forgot about Matisse as well. Matisse is another one who uh, I, although Matisse I think is a bit overrated, but I think I, you know, uh, I always thought that he was. Uh, I mean, they they either rag on they either say Matisse or Picasso is usually the default answer for twentieth century painter. I would yeah. say Matisse is a bit better and more consistent than Picasso. Picasso's later stuff was just shit. Yeah, but. I don't think Matisse pushed the envelope the way Picasso did, and this is why I would say Dolly. Maybe it's a draw then. Yeah, I would, I would say this is why Dolly is better than both of them because uh, you look at Dolly's paintings. Well, uh, and he deals with so much again, and the, the the reason Dolly is dismissed is because of his over the top personality. It's the same thing, you know, why Oscar having Wilde, an anteater in New York. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's the same reason Oscar Wilde is overlooked. Uh, his four major plays. Are four of the greatest comedies ever, um, and and they there's really amazingly consistent. You know, everyone knows the importance of being earnest, but the other ones, uh, Lady Windermere's fan, and uh, what's the other ones? I forget. But I mean, they're just as funny. That I mean, uh, and it, it's just ideal a, husband, the ideal husband. Yeah, uh, and it's it's such a shame. I mentioned Oscar Wilde earlier. I mean, goddamn, Oscar Wilde was you know, as we would say, mad talented. Had he not fucked up his life, had he not been fucked over by the provinciality of the, the day, uh, I think he probably could have done dramas as he aged. And I would have loved to have seen a 65-year-old, uh, you know, Wilde do a drama about society, really bitter about the way he was treated and, and, and whatnot. Um, and this is... the, the And this gets back to, to the novel that I wrote, is that you know, Ben is doing this stuff, and I think once or twice he laments that he, he wants to have more time to be doing the writing, and that's the same thing with this job, you know, I just came off of a nine and a half hour shift before we were talking, and I went to look for some new shoes, and then I I, I got something, a Chick-fil-A to eat, and, you know, uh, and then I'm talking here, and it's like, I want to, there are so many, you know, I've got a corpus larger and greater than anyone in writing, and I think any uh, art, but I could have had more. And that's that's the frustrating thing is I could have had more. I, I could have developed quicker had, had had I not wasted so much time with this writing. And the same thing with Jessica. You know, Jessica, in a sense, if you've ever seen uh, from your science class as a kid, imagine me as a, a, a yeast cell, and Jessica is sort of the bud uh, from my yeast cell, and then there could be a bud from Jessica, and another bud on me, and and whatnot, and I, that's been delimited by the amount of time I have to waste because we live in this society. I send out to these these plays to theaters. You know, one asinine theater, you know, writes back, oh well, when, when you move to Texas, let us know. I said I live in Texas. You know, just the other day, and I was uh, I was uh, on Twitter. I think I I mentioned in the thing. And that dumb cunt Ann Coulter was was writing stuff about how the the shooting in Pittsburgh and the bombings that were the bomb the bomber who was sending threatening bombs you know how this was some left wing plot and, and I said to to some guy who wrote about her putting it down I said she's just a dumb cunt and whatnot and 
Twitter, Twitter has locked my account. I don't know if it's totally banned or whatnot. I'll probably go on Instagram in a couple of days if it's not released. But it's like, the, the, I, just, I just use that to try to get the stuff out there. But even then, I mean, I, I'm stuck at like 1,200, 1,250 followers or something, whatever it is. And it's like, why? Uh, all of these, you look at these people who have these Twitter followings. They have 50,000 people. Whatever, they don't say anything. This get this is what people follow. Now I I've said to Jessica many times, Art, you're never gonna it's only gonna be a, a one percent, you know, one tenth of one percent of the people out there are ever really interested in art. This film struck site that's going down. Jessica was literally crying about this. I said, Jessica, we'll find something else here. Uh and uh, but people don't care about art. People don't care about deeper things. This is why they become scam artists like 